Aloha students and welcome to our physics tutorial for 1.2. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to identify force pairs. This is a concept that can be a little hard to get just from the reading, but I'll do some demonstrations and after that you should be able to always identify if you have an action and a reaction force in a force pair. Now force pairs is a concept that comes from Newton's third law, which states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So thinking about identifying force pairs helps you to know if you have really found what the action force and what the reaction force might be. So let's take a look at an example. Here I have an apple and the apple is resting on a table. So what are the forces acting on this apple? Well, first of all we have gravity which is pulling down and then we have the normal force from the table which is pushing up. So now these forces have to be equal and opposite, otherwise the apple would be accelerating in some direction, but it's just resting on the table. So here we have some equal and opposite forces, but is this a force pair? Well, the answer is no. That is not a force pair, and I will tell you why. In order to have a force pair, you need three things. First of all, there are only two objects involved. The forces will be equal in strength and opposite in direction. Object number one will be pulling or pushing on object number two. And object number two is pulling or pushing on object number one. Now if you start out with pulling, you're going to keep going with pulling on the second one. And likewise, if you start out with pushing on the first one, it's going to be pushing on the second one. So let's see, let's go back to that situation with the apple. Where is the force pair? Well, there are actually two force pairs going on. So here's our apple sitting on the table. And let's talk about gravity. All right. If we're going to state the situation, object number one is pulling on object number two. Well, what's pulling the apple down? It's not the table, it's planet Earth, which is down here exerting a gravitational force on the apple. So if the Earth is pulling on the apple, then down here we're going to say the apple is pulling on the Earth. So is the apple pulling on the earth? Well, yes it is, but the amount of force that the apple exerts on the earth is very, very small compared to the mass of the earth. So it really doesn't change the earth's motion in a significant way. Okay, so now let's take a look at what's going on with the table. So I'll draw it again over here. In this situation, we have the apple that's resting on the table and the apple is pushing down on the table, right? Because gravity is pulling that apple down, so the apple as it rests on the table, it pushes down on the table and the table pushes back on the apple. Now is this a force pair? Yes, it is, because I can say the apple is pushing on the table and the table is pushing up on the apple. So the forces are equal in strength and opposite in direction and there are only two objects involved. So this is a force pair, yes and yes. Okay, let's take a look at another example. In this example, here is a heavy piano on wheels 
And here is someone who is trying to move this piano. Okay, so let's see if we can identify all the force pairs that are going on in this situation. The person is exerting a force on the piano going in this direction. And the piano is also exerting a force on the person, an equal and opposite force going in that direction. Now, is this a force pair? Yes. I can say the piano, object number one, is pushing on the person and the person is pushing on the piano. Okay. So, let's see. What else is happening here? Well, in order to push the piano that way, this person has to be pushing on the carpet, right? Or the floor. He's walking on the floor. So, the person is pushing on the floor in this direction, right? But the floor is pushing back on the person in this direction. And this is actually what's causing the person's forward motion, is the reaction force on the floor. If you think about it, when you're walking around, you're actually pushing backwards on the floor, and the floor, as a reaction force, pushes you forward. Okay, so here's a little test. We're going to see if you can identify the action-reaction pair in this situation. So we're going to start off with the person, and the person is holding on to a leash. And there's a dog at the other end of the leash. And the dog does not want to go in the same direction that the person wants to go. Okay, so let's see if we can identify some force pairs here. Well, it looks like that the person is exerting a force on the dog, right? And the dog is exerting a force on the person, except that there's this leash in the way, right? So we're going to have to be careful when we think about where are the force pairs. All right, so we're going to say that the person is pulling this way on the leash, like this, and the dog is pulling this way on the leash with an equal and opposite force. And that is what's keeping everybody in place, right? Because the force balances out. So is this a force pair? The person is pulling on the leash to the left, and the dog is pulling on the leash to the right. Well, if you said no, then you're correct, because this is not a force pair. Okay, where are the force pairs in this situation? Remember, we need to have only two objects at a time. So the person is pulling on the leash in this direction, and the leash is pulling on the person back in that direction. Okay, so now we have equal and opposite forces. There are only two objects involved, and I can state it in this format. Okay, so now I know I have a force pair. And notice, when you have a force pair, the forces are acting on two different objects. In the situation before, both forces were acting on the leash. You do not have a force pair if both forces are acting on the same object. Now here's the other force, the other force pair that's happening in this situation, is the dog is pulling on the leash in this direction, and the leash is pulling back on the dog in this direction. Okay, and that is a force pair. There are only two objects involved. The forces are equal and opposite. Sorry, I didn't quite draw those arrows equal in length. Let me, let me do a better job. Okay, so the forces are equal and opposite. And I can state it in this format. Object one will be the leash. So the leash is pulling on the dog, and the dog is pulling on the leash in the opposite direction. So now you have a force pair. Okay, so that's how to identify force pairs.
And remember, if you have any questions, please email me at the email address that was in your syllabus. Thanks, and until next time.